Greetings in the name of Christ our Lord and good morning. Welcome to worship at Fourth Presbyterian Church. So glad you're able to watch today. I'm going to make a few announcements and then we'll get into the call to worship. But I have a few prayer concerns and then uh, an announcement or two that I want to make. First of all, our prayer concerns, if you would, please remember uh, Jerry Poner's brother-in-law in your prayers. He's in hospice care. His name's Herb, if you would remember him. Uh, Nancy Wright, as she continues to recover, and Connie Nutgrass from her uh, surgery, continue to pray for her. Uh, Tara and Glenn both have arm injuries, so prayers for them as they continue to recuperate. Um, you might remember I asked you to remember in prayer John David Williams' friends, uh, Colleen and George and their families, if you would please. Uh, Dennis and Joan Little have a friend, um, Dennis Tomberland, if you would remember him in your prayers as well. Uh, Bill and Ruthie have asked that we remember Loretta, Jeff, and uh, Debbie in prayer. Uh, Pat Gould also has a good friend whose husband, uh, uh, Pat's friend is, is Tammy, and Tammy's husband is having some heart or some uh, health issues, and so if you would remember uh, him in your prayers, and Tammy of course. Uh, also, I got word from Jan Merrick that her good friends, uh, Jim and Karen, Jim is having some health issues, and so prayers uh, for Jim during this time. And then finally, I uh, got a notice uh, last night uh, that Michelle and Larry Steyer's son, John, had a heart attack, and so uh, please keep John in your prayers as well. I, I do have a few announcements I want to make, mainly this one. Uh, the website, I want to say a big word of thank you to Robin Woodruff. Robin's been kind of maintaining our website for a long time. But now that I'm doing so many things at home and online, I asked her if it would be all right if I just kind of started monkeying around with it and maybe doing some of the things uh, with our website that I used to do and still do with my 15 for Faith website. Uh, the, the, the 15 for Faith website is really designed for people outside of our congregation, and uh, I'm looking really to build up our fourth website to look more like uh, a website for us. And so I've got some things that are going on. Uh, first of all, the video for today, uh, I hope, well, I guess maybe next week, uh, you'll find the videos on our website. There's a page in there uh, called uh, Worship, and so go to that page. You'll see it up in the menu. You can click on it. To get to our website, just type in 4th PC, F-O-U-R-T-H-P-C dot O-R-G uh, in your uh, either Safari or Google search or whatever. You'll find us. Our website will pop up, and you can navigate the windows from there. Uh, but just a big word of thank you to, uh, one, uh, the people who are paying for it. There are members of our congregation who pay a monthly fee for us to be hosted. And so thank you to them. I didn't ask permission to say that, and they may not want to be known. Uh, but thank you for your gift and your generous support of that. And again, thanks to Robin, who's been maintaining our website for so long. Uh, just wanted to say those two things. Look for those videos to come. I'm hoping to have a blog on there. I'm hoping to have uh, some videos on there, maybe some fun stuff on there, some educational stuff. I'll post on, uh, let's see, I'll post on Saturdays for Sunday's worship, this video, and then I'll do another post on Wednesdays. You can look for that too, and this week, uh, one of the things that I'm going to have is get to know uh, the fourth family. And uh, so there's going to be people who are associated with our church who are going to do little bios on who they are. I really do think during this time of the coronavirus, that we should be doing everything we can to get to know each other even better. And so that's part of the aim behind this. I'll tell you more as I keep posting. So anyway, uh, again, welcome to Fourth Presbyterian Church and to our worship service. We'll turn now to our call to worship. Our call to worship this morning comes from Deuteronomy chapter 6, verses 4 through 9. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. These commandments that I give you today are to be upon your hearts. Impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road, when you lie down and when you get up. Tie them as symbols on your hands and bind them on your foreheads. Let us worship God. Hey guys, welcome to Children's Time. I want to tell you a little story about Micah. Now Micah was a prophet, and a prophet was somebody who spoke for God, kind of told the people what God wanted. And Micah said that one of the things that God wants is for us to love kindness. 
In our scripture passage for today, um, it, the scripture is going to say that uh, what God wants is to do justice, love kindness, and walk humbly with God. And so one of the things we're supposed to do is love kindness. Now, Micah taught a long time before Jesus was even born. He was a prophet speaking for the people and to the people a long time before Jesus was born. But here's the thing. If we want to know how to be kind, how to love kindness, and how to do kind things, who do we look to? We look to Jesus. And so we go to the Bible and we read stories about what Jesus did, what Jesus said, how he treated people. And if you look at that, you can go, okay, well, that's how God wants us to be kind then. God wants us, like Jesus, to forgive people. And God wants us, like Jesus, uh, to help people. And God wants us, like Jesus, to serve people and to do everything we can. So Jesus went around teaching and more, maybe even more important than what he taught was he lived what he taught. And so the people could see in action what God's love looked like. And that's what we can do too. By our words and by our actions, we can show the world and the people around us what God's love looks like. It forgives, it cares, it's compassionate, it's, a, it's just a gift to people when you give to others. That's how God's love works in the world. That's what Jesus wants us to do, and I hope uh, that you'll do it, and I'm going to keep trying to do it, and I know everybody in the congregation is going to keep trying to do it. Let's keep trying to show God's love in the world by the things we say and the things that we do. You guys have a great week, and I will see you next week. God bless. So little Bobby, a 13-year-old boy, is sitting on his front porch. He's got a sad look on his face. He looks up and he sees his buddy Timmy riding down the sidewalk. Timmy's got a bouquet of flowers, some chocolates in his hand, some looks like a bottle of perfume. Bobby hollers out, Timmy, where are you going? He said, I'm going to see my girlfriend Betty. Is that right? Yeah. What are you doing? He said, oh, I'm grounded. I got to sit here on the porch. I got in trouble with mom. So Timmy pulls in and he says, I'll tell you what you do. Take these flowers, put the saddest look on your face as you can, tell her you're sorry, you'll be out of trouble in no time. Bobby says, that may work, but aren't those flowers for Betty? 
He says, yeah, don't worry about it. I got the chocolates and the perfume. So Bobby goes in, makes his apology, comes back out in 10 seconds, shaking his head, got the flowers, hands them back to Timmy. Mom said she wants me to change my behavior. So he goes, I tell you what, she'll be a sucker for the chocolates. Take the chocolates in and try it again. So he goes back in, about 10 seconds later, he comes back out again, shaking his head. Here, take the chocolates back. Mom said she wants me to change my behavior. Finally, Timmy goes, this is the best stuff I got. Take your perfume, take the perfume, go in there and do it again. He walks in, three seconds later, he comes right back out. Mom is just shaking her head. She doesn't want the perfume. She wants me to change my behavior. So Timmy takes all of his stuff and just throws it in the trash can. And Bobby says, what are you doing? He said, Betty caught me holding hands with Julie in the park. Our scripture reading for today comes from the book of Micah, chapter 6, verses 6 through 8. Listen for God's word to you. With what shall I come before the Lord and bow myself before God on high? Shall I come before him with burnt offerings, with calves a year old? Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams? with ten thousands of rivers of oil. Shall I give my firstborn for my transgression, the fruit of my body for the sin of my soul? He has told you, O mortal, what is good, and what does the Lord require of you, but to do justice, to love kindness, and to walk humbly with your God. Words of faith for people of faith. Thanks be to God. So I wanted to start with that little story before reading scripture, uh, my little story about uh, Bobby and Timmy. Uh, Bobby and Timmy both think that they can change the minds of the people who they have offended simply by uh, throwing some gifts at them. It's basically bribery. I'll give you this if you'll kind of overlook the things that I've done wrong. Neither Bobby's mom nor Timmy's girlfriend probably are going to buy that. The bribery won't work, and neither will it work for God. Micah is clear about that when he says, you know, with what shall I come before the Lord? How do we appease God? How do we make God be on our terms again and be with us again? Shall I come with burnt offerings? Is it uh, rams that you want, thousands of rams, or, or calves a year old, or tens of thousands of rivers of oil, or firstborn for my transgressions? What is it that I can do? And Micah is very clear about it. It isn't that God wants some kind of gift, but instead change behavior, do justice, love kindness, walk humbly with your God. Micah is prophesying and saying that the people right now, the leadership right now, is not for the people. It's not for the folks and helping to build them up. It is instead a leadership of nationalism and militarism and a disregard for justice. I'm going to show you a few maps here if you want to uh, take a look on the screen. I've got a picture there of uh, the United Monarchy. You can see that. The top, if you can read closely, you've got to take a close look, but it says uh, Israel, and down at the bottom it says Judah. Those are just different regions of a United Monarchy. But if you look, then you'll see in the next picture, which I'm showing you now, uh, Israel and Judah are separated. You can see the yellow and the green there. The yellow is uh, the Israel section, and Judah is down below. I want to show you then also uh, another map to show you where uh, Micah's birthplace is. You can see it's down there in the Judah section. If you'll just go to the a little bit to the left of the Dead Sea there, you'll see that it's uh, Marshav Gath, Micah's birthplace. And you can see Amos, uh, I think, birthplace is there as well. So you can see that right in that little section. That's where Micah is prophesying from. One more map I want to show you because one of the reasons that Micah is prophesying in this way is because during his time of prophecy is the time that Israel falls to the hands of the Assyrians. Judah is on the brink of that. They don't eventually fall to the Assyrians. They actually fall to the Babylonians a hundred years later or so. 
but they still are made a weak vassal state to the Assyrians during that time. And he's saying the reason for this is because you are not honoring what God wants you to be doing. And so take a look at this map. You can see there Assyria. And if you look all the way down, you can see the Dead Sea again. You can see all the way down there then that the Assyrians have in fact taken over and they have now uh, taken the territory that was Israel. And what Micah is saying is the reason for that is because the people are not behaving, the leadership is not behaving in the way that they should be behaving. They are not doing the things that God has asked them to do. And so what do they want to do? They want to come and appease God and stop this kind of uh, um, invasion by what? Offering some kind of bribe. What shall I come before the Lord? What shall I bow down before the Lord with? Burnt offerings? Calves a year old? Would the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams? With ten thousands of rivers of oil? Shall I give my firstborn for, the trans for my transgressions, the fruit of my body for the sin of my soul? And in every case, Micah is saying that God says no to that. That what God really wants is changed behavior. Do justice, love kindness, and walk humbly with your God. Micah is pretty clear on what God is asking for. Micah is a guy who is a prophet who lived kind of out in his uh, rural area. And the people who are affected by the policies of the leadership are living in that rural area. And so there is some speculation that Micah had a real, you know, sense that uh, the people who were struggling were his people. And so when he, when he speaks out, what he's speaking out against is a sense of nationalism, a sense of militarism, of building up the military, and a, and a gross disregard for justice. And so he speaks out against it. He doesn't win any friends for it, I'll tell you that right now. Those maps show what is kind of taking place, why Micah is saying it's divided. And he's saying, what happens to Israel is going to happen to Judah if you don't start doing justice, loving kindness, and walking humbly with your God. As you look at that and you think about our own nation right now, we are divided at this point. We're divided not so much geographically as maybe the green and yellow would indicate with Israel and Judah, but instead... We are divided as a nation, really, by our uh, ideologies. Liberal, conservative, Democrat, Republican, you name the sides. We can divide ourselves up and be in that place. What is it that God desires right now more than anything, then? To do justice, to love kindness, to walk humbly with our God. If we don't do what we can to bring ourselves together in that way, then we are not doing what it is that God asks. And that's always been my question then. What should be our aim? What is the target we should be aiming at? Both as a church, as an individual, as a church, as a nation, what should we be aiming at? Building up our sense of nationalism? Building up our sense of dominance in the military? Should we disregard justice or should we always be seeking justice? These are the things that I think are pretty clear when we read Amos, when we read Micah, when we read Isaiah. All of them are seeking some kind of justice. All of them want to do what is right by God. Listen to these words from chapter 4 of Micah. You'll know them. They're words that actually come from in Isaiah. And every Christmas I read them. Every Christmas. It's just that I read these words not from Micah. I read them from Isaiah. But Micah and Isaiah, Micah is probably a younger contemporary of Isaiah's. And so there is influence there and they're preaching at the same time. But listen to these words. You'll know them. You'll know them in an instant. For out of Zion shall go forth instruction, and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. He shall judge between many peoples and shall arbitrate between them. Strong nations far away. They shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nations shall not lift up sword against nation. Neither shall they learn war any more. Those are words we know and are really familiar with if you've ever come to a Christmas or an Advent service. Our task, according to Micah, our task, according to other prophets, is not to try to dominate others, but to welcome others. 
Not to force others into our way of thinking and who we are, but instead to invite others to be a part of a larger community. Our task is not to insist on our own way, as 1 Corinthians says about love, but instead to be willing to sacrifice a little bit. Jesus himself lived a life of sacrifice, not of dominance. Everything about our faith says that we should work to build a global community, a community where we welcome one another, not just as individuals, but as nations. Again, I turn to Micah and Isaiah. Nations shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore. Micah, do justice, love kindness, and walk humbly with our God. If you look in the book of Philippians, you can turn to chapter 2 and read these words about Jesus. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself. Taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness, and being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. The book of Corinthians says that love does not insist on its own way. And if God is love, then God does not insist on God's own way. The Apostle Paul takes the gospel out to all people, Gentiles included. Peter declares that God shows no partiality. God calls us not to dominate those who are around us, but instead to cooperate, to serve, to help, to give, to build with one another, to invite hospitality. All of this is humbling, to say the least, because our natural inclination is to want to build up and dominate. But that is not the call of the prophets, and that is not the call of Jesus. And so my big question always is the same, what are we aiming for? What is it we're trying to accomplish and to achieve? To dominate the world around us or to invite the world in community with us? Is it a sense of competition that we're kind of working to build up or a sense of cooperation? I think our faith is pretty clear. That we're supposed to be putting our time and our energy, our words, our resources, towards those things that build a community, that welcome people in, where people help one another, care for one another, forgive one another. This is the kind of world we've been asked to build by God, and not just through Jesus, but through the prophets before. All along, our faith has been one where our task is not to take on the ways of the world, which seem to want to dominate, but instead, do everything we can to help people be included in this great human family where we all can share in God's goodness. And so my question is always this, which method of advancement in our world are we going to put our resources towards? Dominance and power or cooperation and community? I'm pretty sure we know where our faith stands on. As a congregation, one of the things I am so proud of is the ways that you do exactly that. We don't all think alike, and we do the best we can to unite ourselves around that common cause, that common goal of God, which is to do justice, to love kindness, and to walk humbly with our God. I'm proud of this congregation for doing everything it can to equal the playing field for all people. I'm proud of this congregation for helping those who struggle to maybe get a leg up and to have some help in moving forward. I love that our church is so hospitable and invites so many people to be a part of what we do. These are the things that we're supposed to be a part of. That's where we aim and put our energy. Let's keep doing it. Let's just keep doing what we can to build up this world community where nation does not lift up sword against nation and where people come together and work cooperatively together to do everything we can to build up God's kingdom on earth, the kingdom that Micah proclaims, and Isaiah proclaims, and Hosea proclaims, and Amos proclaims, and certainly the kingdom that Jesus proclaims. All to God's glory. Amen. And now as we go forth from worship,
whether physically or digitally. Let us go forth in peace. Go forth in kindness. Go forth in Christ. In the name of the Creator, the Redeemer, and the Sustainer. Amen.